So, <laughs> stop <laughs> stealing my word. I'm just a regular lawyer, it's a man. Third. <laughs> before we get started, so yeah, Let's go I there. made the comment that I I told Rocco before we started. I said, "Hey, you know, uh, I'm, I got different kind of guests coming on the show and so forth." And I, you know, and Rocco's like, "Hey, you know, you're sitting down tonight with an entertainment lawyer," and I made the comment just saying, "Oh, yeah." <laughs> I said, man, sometimes I keep forgetting. I keep thinking that you know you're 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 not. A, I keep thinking that you're a regular attorney. Yeah, and I use the word regular. And before I could, <laughs> say, it was coming out of my mouth, and I wanted to reach out and grab it and pull it back in, but it had too late. It had I'm fast, rest. man. I'm fast. So now I'm gonna have to hear about this forever. Just a couple weeks, then I'll let go of it. You'll never let go of it. We'll I talk about it Saturday on the radio show oh, as well. Fantastic. I'm sure. I didn't mean you're a regular attorney. I know, I know man. I'm, well, just, I'm just your average, regular, everyday Joe that happens to have Esquire after my name. Yes. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> All right. Show three. Yes. Uh, let's do it's it. It's been a little crazy. Uh, last <laughs> time we met, um, we'll start with what we always start with. Yeah. Every time we have this show, I talk about what the average price per gallon is. Uh, it's uh, now $5 even. It's insane, man. Yeah. It's a little higher in Pennsylvania, but we're the threshold for the country is $5 is the threshold now across the country. Yeah. I mean, hundred and I think last show we talked, I filled up my car was like a hundred and twenty some. I think I'm over hundred and thirty now to fill it up, which mm. blows my mind. Like when I drive past gas stations, I'm thinking to myself, like, holy shit! Like just in two years, like just in two years. Like I said, my my SUV is two years old. Right. When I bought it, the first time I filled it up next to my office, forty five dollars. And now it's a 3X, yeah. like literally a 3X in two years. Like explain that to me. And if I hear it's Putin's price hike or whatever they're saying now, I mean, no, like we have our problems to fix here. Mm-hmm. And the fact that we're not doing anything about it or we're doing this bullshit to, to you know, we're going to do this. Or we're gonna do this. Well, uh, so again, I, I, I don't think Rocco and I have ever said that it's a, you know, we do one thing and it fixes it. No, not at all. But we need to start putting things in play. Right. To eventually fix it, you know, and the, going to our, I won't say enemies, but going to some states that don't look upon us kindly right. all the time and then begging them to pump more oil because we want to be green. But it's okay if they fuck up the environment over there. Right. We'll endorse that. We just, right. We're just not going to do it ourselves. Well, right? and, and that's always the problem I have because, again, like we talked about last time, everybody talked about let's go green. Okay, explain that. Let's get into the details. No one wants to do that because it's too difficult of a conversation to have because it's hard to be completely green because there, you need fossil fuels to run some of the things that make people make things go green. Right. It's like we have we have if we're going to talk about these things, these solutions, the energy crisis and the energy solutions, we need to put everything on the table, meaning both sides open the kimono and say, let's sort this shit out because mm-hmm. it's, it's too much of like, let's talk about this little piece over here. Then this little piece over here, and that's talking points for the media. It's like, no, we have a fucking problem we need to solve. Let's cut the bullshit, put the politics aside, put this country first and solve the fucking problem. So yes. that gets you fired up. Yes. No. Well, what gets me even crazier is, you know, we have a short memory because <laughs> President Biden think? said during the campaign, you know, he just full disclosure. He gave it. He gave yeah. us the disclosure. He said, he said, I and I don't I'm paraphrasing, but he basically said he's going to put fossil fuel business out of business or he's going to right. he's going to make fossil fuels not welcome in American society or whatever the, right. the, the, the linguistics were to get there basically said that he wants to eliminate fossil fuels right. in this country well that's a great 20 30 year plan right. that can be I think you'd even find some I don't know some moderate thinking people that would go for that maybe even some some conservatives that would go for a plan in place sure. right you just can't do it overnight. But but and think about that statement. Okay, so you're going to eliminate fossil fuels. So that so that powers gasoline cars, right? Mm-hmm. The what, what is it? The average middle class family makes about fifty to fifty five thousand. That's their that's their annual income. An electric car costs more than someone's annual income. So if we eliminate fossil fuels, now people cannot fuel the vehicles they can purchase cheaply. Now they have to buy an electric vehicle, which is one time their salary like how do you expect people now you wonder why we're in a debt crisis because you're you're telling people that we're going to eliminate the fuel that powers the cars you can buy cheaply because we want to have a clean environment but yet we want you to go broke 
buying the new car so you can go. So wh- where do you draw the line? So this is where my mind's going recently. You okay. just, what you just said was you're going to go broke. Well, you know, it's not too far of a stretch to consider the possibility that maybe this is kind of intentional. Uh, you think? A lot of this shit's intentional, in my opinion. Because you're basically forcing people to Mm -hmm. think about alternate ways of transportation. You're forcing them. Walking, biking, electric vehicles, Mm -hmm. right? Mass transit, infrastructure plans. And the crazy part about it is, you know, it's one thing to do that. But by the process of doing that, by raising the gas prices, you're screwing up the economy where inflation is so high. Right. Nobody can even possibly rationally think about getting an electric car. Right. That's the last thing you're thinking about. Trust me. Right. Nobody, no average Joe who was looking at Tesla's the past two years going, wow, it's a little bit above my price range, but it's interesting. Mm-hmm. Maybe I can you know, wait till it comes down a little bit yep. or maybe I can wait for additional energy credits mm-hmm. or something. But it's interesting, mm-hmm. but still a little bit of above my where i want to be from a price standpoint but now yeah you keep you're not making it a more conducive environment to buy it now no fucking way no i mean and, and think and think about the the you know the, the unintended consequences right so we talk about products and goods right inflation's hitting all these things okay you, we don't have electric trucks, right? They're diesel power. The majority of trucks on the road that are shipping our goods through interstate commerce are diesel powered. Yep. That's over six dollars a gallon right now. Sure is. So when people complain about the cost of goods, that's the reason why. Like, look at the supply chain. Look, look at how much more. So if if diesel fuel, and we'll just do simple math, right? If it costs me, you know, if I have a hundred items, right, and it costs me a hundred dollars to ship those items across the country, that's one dollar shipping, right? Now, if my fuel increases four X, that hundred dollars, now purely based upon math, if we're assuming everything else is constant, that's gonna that's gonna go up four times. So that hundred turns to four hundred. So now each item's gonna cost instead of one dollar shipping, four dollars shipping. That cost is being passed on to the consumer. No so me now instead of paying ten dollars for this item i'm now paying fourteen dollars a forty percent increase Mm -hmm. in the cost of that good just because everything else staying constant fuel prices so now you're you're trying to force us out of fossil fuels all it's doing is creating this huge inflationary problem where the cost of goods i mean i see it now like even the office furniture we're waiting on right the the shipping is is fucking insane the cost and I know if I would have bought this furniture two years ago, that cost would be half. Oh, certainly. And certainly. I mean, that that's an unintended con- – maybe it is an intended consequence of, of this fuel crisis because think about things that are shipped via truck across the country. Mm-hmm. Food, consumer staples, mm-hmm. things that we use every day. That price to ship has increased substantially. I have clients that are in the trucking industry, in the logistics industry. They, they're having a hard time keeping up because the companies – that are hiring them to ship aren't paying the same rate. So they're losing profit margin because of this. So there's all these things that are going on in the background, the people that the average American doesn't necessarily see. And I think six months from now, this shit's going to really hit the fan. I just find it fascinating. The the following you, we saw, uh, we saw this uh, democratic takeover of the presidency and Congress <laughs> to start uh, the start of the pandemic, right? Yep. Okay. So we had this massive shift. We saw, we saw, um, uh, we saw riots. <laughs> we saw we, we saw race become such a volatile, yeah, um, issue. Sure. Um, that, that, that basically was amplified mm-hmm. all the time. Yes. In some regards, it's fantastic. Absolutely. In some regards, it's terrible. Yeah. We saw a a effort to defund the police, or even if we even if that's kind of um, not explaining exactly, we certainly saw less funding for yeah, the police. Yes. We saw, uh, we in many instances, we saw an attack on our existing police forces mm-hmm. over the yes. actions of a small few. Yes. So when you stand back and you reflect over the past two years, mm-hmm. it's not a far stretch to look at could there be an intentional. Um, effort to destabilize society, and now when yeah. you look at it, when you look at the fact that the narrative <laughs> of the liberal 
mindset in the country appears to be, and if I'm all wet, tell me. Sure. It doesn't seem to be coming from the moderates, and it doesn't seem to be coming from the conservatives. It's it's basically. <laughs> I, I it's so it's so unbelievable. The mindset apparently is that we need to rethink elements of the constitution the constitution needs to be rewritten we yeah, need to we course. need to do a different kind of policing mm-hmm. we need to quit putting cr- moderate moderate criminals in jail we need to basically start setting people free yeah no we're not prosecuting violent criminals uh we have you know it, it, so the liberal mindset is a change in society well yeah. even if all those things i just mentioned uh, ha- happen now, on top of all that mm-hmm. social disorder that we've yeah. seen, yep. okay, and again, back, you know, back to um, the summer of 2020, there was a lot. Look, there was horrible events that happened there, absolutely, and, and it raised awareness that needs to be not only made aware, action needs to be taken. But those 100%. are those are specific actions yes. to solve the problem without destroying our our police. Correct, right? In my yes. opinion, I agree. On top of all that social disorder, Rocco, mm-hmm. now, now we have a gasoline issue. Mm-hmm. Maybe it was spurred by this war. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. Smarter minds than me can talk about that, but we have it. Here yep. we are. So on top of this social disorder and this uncertainty, you now have gasoline at a ridiculous price, which is now pushing inflation yes. at rates we have never seen, which is now affecting other markets. Yep. The markets in general, the Dow, yes, right, crypto, yep, the real estate industry. It is a tidal wave of hurt on the American people, yep. orchestrated by the party of the people. The Democrats mm-hmm. are the party of the working person, the yeah. working class. Yeah, it's not playing out that that's what's happening. Mm-hmm. They're actually punishing. Yeah, through these actions in in this eighteen months, eighteen short months. Yeah. Look at where we are. And if I'm not being fair because there's international issues, Rocco, that you know are affecting there's always international always issues. Be there. I don't give a shit who the president yeah. is. At any given time, yep. things happen. Yes. Most of them well out of their control. Yes. It's how you manage it. And the biggest thing right now is after all the social disorder, my point is now we have a circumstance where we won't even stand up for our own oil independence our yes. own oil industry and even if it doesn't solve it overnight we won't even say hey you know what we're gonna we don't like it but we, we're gonna we realize what we need to do and for the next three years we're gonna make these here's what here's what we're gonna do we're gonna change the, the leasing structure we're gonna oh, we're gonna bring these bring these oil executives in but not in a panel to embarrass them no to bring them in and say hey we need to lower the prices will you get commitments will you pump more will you yep. help drive the price down mm-hmm. if we increase supply domestically yeah. get them involved don't bring them on a stage and punish them it's always about blaming somebody yeah, no this one particular administration and this this ruling party yes is about blame 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 instead yeah. of even thinking about trying to solve the problem in front of their face well th- th- that's the whole problem i have with with politics in general right now no one's trying to solve the problem all we're doing is passing blame and fighting and to me like i, I look at a two-party system one the two-party system is broken two when you have parties in power, we have to learn to work together. This country's fucked, but plain they, and simple. But see, they're dealing with the they're they're legislating uh, by, with the extremes well, of I their agree. party. Correct. That, that is the problem. So, I look at it when when they create such civil disarray, right? Mm-hmm. What what does it do? It creates fear in the populace. Yes. And when you have fear in the populace, they look to the government to solve the problems. Yes. It's a way to preserve power, in my opinion. Yeah, so that's getting to capitulate. Right. We we create all this, you know, civil discontent, the, 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 this civil disarray and the, this civil disorder, and then people are fearful and they're afraid, like, oh shit, like what do we do? Who can solve the problem? Well, the government's supposed to help us with this. And that's what people are looking to do. However, I do think people are starting to wake up. Mm-hmm. When we start talking about changing the Constitution and fundamental rights that are granted by our founding fathers in that document, that's when people are like, wait a second. 100%. Now, look, we're talking about gun control. We talked about that last time. I believe there are measures that need to be put in place, right? I, I'm, I'm not saying that anybody should be able to buy a gun. Mm-hmm. Like, it is a right in the Constitution, but there should be some checks and balances. Well, don't we in place. have those already on the books? Correct. 
and that's the thing we, we talk we talk about all, all this stuff like we don't have certain things in place and we, we already do and if you look at the states that have strict gun laws they have gun violence a criminal is a criminal in my right, opinion right. like guns don't kill people people kill people mm-hmm. like criminals it's always kill people been and, and, and that's i hate to say that and i, I know people will give a shit for that but that's that's my belief mm-hmm. right and we there's there's mental health issues in this country that we have to fix there's a lot of things we have to fix but the fact of the matter is we have to fix them not just calling attention to the problems and trying to find blame for the problems let's sit down and say look put your democrat and republican you know fucking flags aside how do we solve this problem because this is still in my opinion the greatest country on earth Mm -hmm. i would never want to live anywhere else i've been across the world i've seen places that i would never want to live i've been to india i've been to eastern europe i've been to israel all beautiful places i would not want to live there it's a different world this is the greatest country we have to save this country we have to fix this country. There are a lot of fundamental problems that are happening right now. Absolutely. Like the race issue, absolutely. There are things we need to fix. Mm-hmm. LGBTQ, absolutely. There, there are certain fundamental things we have to fix in this country. But we have to start looking at how do we solve problems, not how do we call attention to problems and blame people for problems. That's what we're doing right now, and especially this administration. I believe that. And it's not because I'm a Trump supporter or, or this supporter. I call it like I see it. Mm-hmm. They're not taking responsibility for the shit. No, th- this is more more than any president that I've been yes. in my lifetime yes. that I can think of. I agree. That it just really, I mean, no president really embodies the buck stops here mentality. There's always looking to deflect. I get that. But there is nothing that this administration will take ownership in. Yeah, I mean, I mean, look, you know, Trump had his faults, Obama had his faults, faults, Bush had his faults, Clinton has faults. Those are the presidents I remember through my lifetime. Mm-hmm. But they all, I believe, all of them had, had some decency within them. You know, mm-hmm. all of those presidents you know, took mm-hmm. responsibility for certain things. Mm-hmm. Clinton did, Obama did, you know, Bush did, Trump did. Biden, I think, one is just fucking clueless. Like, well, that's the issue. out of his mind. That's clueless. the issue. Like, should not be in office. I'm calling it as I see it. The, the guy, the guy is mentally, uh, right. he's cognitively diminished. Hundred percent. Same thing with Nancy Pelosi, the Speaker of the fucking House. Like she's in her eighties, she's incoherent half the time. Yep. Like these are the people running the country, and we need to fix that because we're never going to solve the major problems: this energy crisis, inflation. It's not going to get solved. The fact that the ultra left or or far left or whatever you want to—I don't—I don't even like labels, but I mean you have to kind of some like quantify it in some way. Yes. Um, left left-wing stylings whatever you want yeah, to say yes the far but, left but the extreme left mm-hmm. has gotten control of the governing body of the country yeah. mm-hmm. these last 18 months is really earth-shattering to the rest of the country yeah because you're you're even your left your left-leaning um democrats your moderate democrats your moderate conservative democrats and everything in between yeah. All of us are looking at some of the decisions and going, what the hell is going on? This isn't the America we know. No. Our streets aren't safe. Our cops right. are getting shot in the streets. These people are, aren't, aren't getting arrested. If they are getting yeah. arrested, they, 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 the, people have done violent crimes yes. since the summer of 2020. Yep. There have been significant amounts of violent crimes done yes. for whatever the motives are. Yep. You know, the people are walking around that haven't even been brought to trial yet yeah. because of uh, I hate to use the word liberal. That's what the media calls yeah. it. But just left thinking, mm-hmm. thinking ways of uh, doling out justice. I mean, but it's not in law. It's not in. It's not to the benefit of society. But also isn't in, in um, conjunction with the main swath of America. It's yeah. not representative of what um, the country believes. I, I, agree. I, I honestly believe that. Now again, yeah. we have luck elections to solve that, and yes. that's what we're starting to see. We're going to see that big time. But um, my God, hour. I don't know why it takes an election for them not to see that. I mean, I, Biden ran his whole life. I mean, I'm older than you, so I can yeah. remember Joe, and I actually liked Joe because I mean, I realized that he was kind of like a hatchet man. Bob yeah. Bull was the conservative hatchet man, and I always thought that Biden was the Democratic yeah. hatchet man. I, that's what I thought, but. Joe was always knocked by the left wing part, the left wingers in his party. If you're moderate. being too moderate, yeah, I right? agree. Yes, and maybe that's still what's in him, if he even knows what's in him. Yeah, but it, maybe he, 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 maybe he does know, but maybe he just can't go up against the power. The machine. That's exactly what it is. In my the opinion. funny part about it is, like, where is that? How is that power defined? Why? Because you see, right now, moderate Democrats running. 
mm-hmm. from the liberal wing of their party. Yeah. Running uh, AOC and the rest of her little little yep. group there, they're going to be ostracized. Give it another six months. We yep. get into the we get into the spring and su- next summer. Mm-hmm. They're gonna they're gonna try to run them out of the party. Here's what here's what I believe happened and is happening. Again, this is purely my perspective and you know in a, a, a purely subjective perspective. You had you had that far left, the, the AOCs, the young. They were relying on the young vote. Let's get them charged up, like these social issues. Let's you know it should be fair for it's everybody. You know, so let's get all these voters out. Okay, great, cool. Now these voters put these people in power, and they're seeing, well, fuck, I can't buy a car. I can't afford a house. I can barely afford groceries. Wages aren't going up. What the fuck did I do? And I'm seeing that people I've talked to that I know were far left have all made those statements to me. They, they haven't admitted they voted wrong, but you can hear it in their voice. They wish they could take it back because they said this is not what they voted for. They voted for they, they voted a man out of office is what they did yeah, first. They voted yeah. a man out of office because they got their feelings hurt. Okay, understand. Everybody votes for a reason. They did not believe America would turn into this. And now they're like, when the, when the rate hike just happened, then right? Then fucking admit it. Well, th- they won't. They won't. Because uh, well, that, well, that, here's the, the problem. problem. Well, that's the problem. Th- that generation, I believe they won't admit it. That's they won't They won't admit it. But but if you look at it, so there was a there was a study, I think, came out, or, or an article I just read about the rate hike, right? So the Fed just raised rates again, mm-hmm. you know, 75 mm-hmm. basis points. I'm well aware. Right. <laughs> what, what this article said, it was, it was a study done. It said, there is a very low probability that most millennials will be able to afford a home now Mm -hmm. now think about that like that generation because of that rate hikes they're over six percent right mortgage rates oh yeah oh yeah you know the mortgage i have on my house i refinance during the during the pandemic 2.75 percent so we are too now could i afford to pay a six percent yeah like i've been i'm you know i'm in my 40s who wants to i don't want to think about what who who that's driven out of the housing market Mm -hmm. all these millennials the people that voted these people into office it's a very good point that's a very good point and they're and now they're starting to see like oh shit look what i did i need to rethink what i'm doing that's what i think is going to happen in november and come 2024 a lot of these people that the aocs were relying on to be their base let's get them charged up like social justice this that you know all these things that yes yes we have these problems we need to fix them they voted these people in the office, and all these people did was fuck those people. Because guess what? You and I, like we've we've been in the profession. We're like, can I can I afford the inflation? Yeah. Can I afford gas? Yeah. It's not really it's not bothering me. One. It sucks, but it's it not sucks. it's not going to change my lifestyle. No. To people that are millenn- young people coming out of school, that impacts them substantially. No question. You know, if if one of your biggest expenses is fuel to go to work, mm-hmm. and that increases. 200 300 Mm percent but your wages increase three to five percent do the fucking math eventually it's not going to work and that's that's what i think we're going to see what was the gamble do you think that the biden administration believes that because more people are working from home there's less people on the road it's not going to have a huge impact on american people they can handle it there's got to be a motive right there's always a motive for everything it could be innocent it could be haphazard it could be conspiratorial I don't know. I think they miscalculated what people will put up with. I think they thought they had that demographic so in their so in the bag, so wrapped around their finger that they'll do whatever the fuck we say and believe whatever whatever we tell them is happening. I think what's happening now, you're starting to see. Look at these companies that are changing their policies, right? Like the Netflix. Mm-hmm. If you don't like our programming, you can fucking quit. Like there's a lot of companies that were going to the far woke side of the left and playing in that ball field to now saying, oh, shit, that's not us anymore. It's too far. And they're changing their tune. So I think I think they miscalculated. They calibrated too far left and realized that, oh, shit, now what are we going to do? I mean, I think, too, there, I think in the summer of 2020 that I think our society saw some absolutely horrific stuff. And it, it did make a lot of our society really think about their views on race and to think about and yeah, violence. Yeah, absolutely. I, so there's a lot of benefit that came out of that. 100% but what happened agree. was it's like we are very our American society is is we're always like reactionary, you know, and we're always and we <laughs> like our politicians. We take things to extremes, and yes. you had you had companies mm-hmm. abandon their sensible their sensibilities. Yes, exactly. To go 
flip an entire HR manual completely 180. Yeah, right, exactly. And, and instead of saying, okay, how can we be more inclusive? How can we how can we do things, take a critical look at? It? No, no, no. We're just going to throw our HR manual out and let a, an independent group write our HR manual. That's kind of oversimplified, yeah. but that's kind of <laughs> no. what happened. Yeah, you're we right. Just get, get, we basically, and, and you obviously, what came out of that summer too as, as it's matured, they kind of gave into mob mentality. Absolutely. They, they were intimidated. Yep. Now, now some of these boards mm-hmm. are looking back, uh, especially as the economy starts to worsen. It's only going to get worse. Yeah. You're going to see more and more rejection of woke mentality yep. or even anything. And, and the shame of it is it, I hope that the good that came out of 2020, I hope that, that we don't lose some of that Agre- agree. because these boards are going to get so desperate at mm-hmm. some point in time that we, we may have we may go back to a to the working um the working environment of the fucking 70s and 80s mm-hmm. we don't need that no. so i just hope that again Rocco, i i'm almost like losing my shit because i'm on <laughs> i'm doing not just our shows but every yeah. podcast is like why can't people think calm down and think about working in the middle and compromising yeah. and getting it done and then get on with your life we are Too so hard. fucking caustic man yeah we had to pick a side we, people picked a side and they've dug their hills in and that's it this is my team and fuck you if you don't believe it or if you don't support my team and that's not how you solve problems no like this no. country was founded on debate Mm-hmm. and conversation and discussion like that's how we founded this country right people got into a room they said how do we make sure this country does not turn into what we just left 100%. And let's have a discussion let's put some rules in place some fundamental rules mm-hmm. fundamental rights that the people will have over the government the people and now we're trying to change that but this is what i would say to those who are lifelong democrats mm-hmm. right and let's just say you don't consider yourself, um, you know, an extremist at all. You don't have extreme views. You, just have, you have Democrat mm-hmm. views. Sure. Rock, you know, rock solid Democratic views yeah. from the Democratic Party um, for decades. You can't look at what your party's doing and actually be on board with a lot of this shit. There's just no fucking no. way. No. Just like if a Republican voter, rock solid Republican values. Let's say you, you're kind of like a moderate conservative, right? Mm-hmm. You could you wouldn't want the the radicals of your fucking no. party to take control of this country. I would never no. want the extreme right to no. take control of this country. Not There's at no all. way. Not at all. Because they're just as radical as the extreme left is. Absolutely agree. We gotta 100%. we gotta it'll never be straight down the middle. No. But it's got to be somewhere close. Mm-hmm. And there can be leanings and tendencies and we can negotiate and all that stuff. But man, we're we're little, we're throwing bombs. We're throwing extreme bombs at each other all damn That's day. All we do. It's nuts. And it's driven by the media. It's crazy. When you think about it, it's driven by the but media. We're, but we're living by it. Like our le- there there's legislation mm-hmm. being done by that, which is well, absolutely insane well i mean there's so many things that are insane i mean we can go into so many all right let's talk about okay how about this one yeah we had a supreme court justice <laughs> that Capital. i believe and i, I and i, I want to be factual about it my understanding was that there was a man a young mm-hmm. a young man who uh whatever his motives were to cause him to do this he basically got a weapon and some other things that could be used uh to to either kidnap or mm-hmm hurt or kill yes. somebody and he was with the intent self admitted yes. intent to kill yes. or hurt the family of Kavanaugh. justice Kavanaugh. yes right correct he said this to the police department yes when or fbi when he was mm-hmm. arrested um and outside of any outside of the conservative news mm-hmm. slant if you were watching the liberal news mm-hmm. things you would never know this happened nope not at all new york times had it i think on the front page on the very bottom of yep. the page mm-hmm. that made the reference the article on a different page yep. it's a supreme court justice right there was a murder attempt on him. correct i'll repeat myself <laughs> a supreme court justice the highest a, court in the land there was a murder attempt yes already in a very caustic environment mm-hmm. because of an upcoming ruling yes do we so all, we're already talking about it it yep. isn't like out of the blue yep you know there's this is like yeah in your face every day mm-hmm. of the of why it might be or why it was attempted to be done half our news covered it half of our news did not 
I, will, I, I don't know what to say. <laughs> I will tell you this. If it was a liberal justice, that would have been on the news cycle for fucking a month. On, on every liberal news. I'm just being honest. Like, that's how I see it. The fact that they... Had it been Ginsburg or, or before she or went... Sotomayor. Yes. Like, it, w- it would have absolutely been... I mean, no the, the fact that Bill Maher, who's pretty liberal, went on a tyrant about the New York Times not picking it up. Like, that tells you something. When the left starts eating their own... And that's what's happening. Like he, when he's calling out that, like he's funny, and I and I I like some of his viewpoints yeah. because I give the guy credit. Yes, he he wears his his political leanings he on lets his sleeve. You know where he stands, but he's also very thoughtful. Like I agree with a lot of the stuff he says. Mm-hmm. You know, and when he said, like that's right. Like that's a Supreme Court justice, regardless of their political stance. Doesn't matter. That is one of the justices that are put on the highest court in the land to be the gatekeepers of society. And there was a murder attempt. And the liberal media is like, ah, not a big fucking deal. Well, they, you, you know, the they fuck? don't care because they're okay with yeah. the protesting in their front yard. Correct. I mean, like, I, I don't know the law well enough that what the laws uh, in regards to what you're allowed to do and not allowed to do. Mm-hmm. I, as a citizen, Rocco, I, I absolutely understand the importance of protest. Sure. I understand the, no, no. It's freedom let, of speech. Let, let, me, let me, yes. Let me rephrase that. I okay. understand the importance of freedom of speech. Yep. I also understand the importance of protecting the, rights to, to lawfully and respectfully protest absolutely personally i have no interest in protesting anything i don't think no, it does here. a fucking thing no and i look back in history where yes there were some big protests mm-hmm. on some big issues in this country and it did gain press yes and maybe that was enough to to change a vote in congress or i get it mm-hmm. it can happen mm-hmm. in my lifetime I think it's a big waste of fucking time. Well, if, if you if the you protest is the ballot box to me, okay, to me, I, I will give you that. However, if you protest with solutions, the problem I have with the way we protest now is we protest problems, right? It's like this is a problem, this is a problem, this is a problem. Let's get mad at everybody that's caused the problem. We should be saying this: we are protesting this problem, but we have a solution. Listen to us. We are protesting the solution. We are putting it out there. Here's what we think needs us all. Defunding the police was not the answer. Like, that's just a statement, right? What does defund the police mean? Well, that was reactionary. They were reactionary. reactionary to a small, small group of police yes. officers that did a horrid thing. Correct. Correct. So they wanted to punish the entire institution. And you can't do that. You cannot do that. Well, not only can you do it, it's got to be one of the goddamn stupidest things I've ever seen a thousand percent. in my life. A thousand percent. And who in their right mind, a rational thinking person, mm-hmm. did not think that if we actually did it, because I never thought we'd do it. I ne- mm-hmm. When I heard that first, I laughed my ass off. Yeah. Because you can't defund the police in the United States. Mm-hmm. They started to do it. Mm-hmm. Who possibly would know that that was going to end badly? <laughs> well, right. <laughs> I don't even know where to begin. I mean, that, that's the that, that's the problem. So, it's a reflection on our stupidity, man. We it, we we're stupid. We we don't need to be stupid, but we just don't fucking think. We don't think that that's the problem. That that is the problem. We and again, it, 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 I actually believe technology has been one of the biggest benefits. That this world has seen also one of the biggest curses because technology has taught us not to think. The answer is right there. You can get it quickly, right? I could just find the answer here. What this person says online is probably what, what I believe now. I don't have to think any further. Look what happened during the pandemic. Everybody became a constitutional law expert, an epidemiologist. I'm like, you're just fucking regurgitating a Facebook post you just read because I read it too. That is not your original thought. That is someone else's thought that they took from someone else to use now regurgitate and try to pass off as your own. It's not how this world works. So speaking of COVID... Let's speak I mean, about it. I mean, it's still around, uh, you know. Yeah, 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 Monkey pox is on the way. Oh, um, yeah, but usually you're not taking anal sex, so you're going to be okay. Right. At least I hope you're not. <laughs> Anyways, uh, that's kind of like the way that you know it's being spread or whatever. So I'm sorry, but I'm just fact, I'm just re- I'm funny. just talking about what I read. Uh, yeah, I didn't you know, read that on the, ma- on the major news sites. Listen, all of them. Yeah, let's go to COVID though. Yeah, COVID. So uh, before we even start on that, yeah. Uh, so there was a hearing, I guess, that was done. I think actually the day of this filming, yeah, uh, where Dr. Fauci was um, testifying via video mm-hmm. because he's quarantine. isolating, yeah. quarantine because although he's got four booster shots, yeah. most vaccinated person in the country, yes, besides the president, yeah. sure, um, <laughs> he has COVID. Yeah, he does, and that that's not even. I mean, I'm not even 
even want to talk about that. I yeah. want to talk about the, what happened at the exchange. He had another epic exchange with Rand Paul yep. again. And uh, the question was asked to him, and I again, I'm paraphrasing. Sure. Rand Paul asked him, has he profited, has Dr. Fauci profited yep. from the pharmaceutical companies because of the work he does in his current position? Yeah. And he refused to answer. He mm-hmm. said he wasn't required to answer. There was some, there was some law that gave him uh, the ability to kind of plead the fifth to ask yeah. the question and not answer. And my argument to you would be, if he didn't profit, didn't just say no. I didn't. Yeah. I have not received any profit, and then move on to the next question. Yeah, the law does not but compel he, you that, not to speak. But he and he brought up that little mm-hmm. loophole where he did not have to answer the question, which to me just says, well, yeah, you. You did profit. Well, right, because think of the word choice there. I don't have to answer the question. It does not mean I'm not allowed to answer the question. If, if he would have said, this law does not permit me to answer that question, it's one thing. This law states I do not have to answer the question. So it's an affirmative choice you made to not disclose, to not answer the question. So in my any reasonable person would assume from that statement that you did fucking profit. Because if you didn't, you would just say, no, I didn't profit. Because you know that is an issue that everybody wants to know right now. Hmm. Like, why else would that question be answered? So if you're not going to answer the question and say, no, I did not profit, you're going to say, you know what, there's a law that allows me that says I don't have to answer that question. I do not have to disclose my financials. Well, I'm going to fucking say you probably did profit then, you piece of shit. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 the sooner this just guy, be truthful for sooner this guy gets off the, the American stage, the better. Well, I, I just I just want people to be truthful when it comes to that. Like, if you profited, okay, just say it. Just say it. Is it going to be that big of a deal? Maybe, maybe not, but at least be truthful. Let the American people who pay your fucking salary know what's going I'm on. I'm sorry. In light of what we just went through, they should have been he should have been wise enough to realize at some point in time, if you're going to make money off this, yeah. you, even if it was baked into <laughs> his job description. Sure. That he was going to profit from this, yeah, that should have been disclosed up front early, yeah, especially exactly. when he was taking the initial shots, right? Yeah. If you're yes. gonna be, if you're gonna be the darling of the American public, or you set yourself out to be the darling and the yeah. savior, and you love the role, Doug yeah, Fox, oh, he loved you it, loved it, loved it until it kind of turned on him. Yeah, see? I mean, I, I loved him. He didn't first. like it too much. Yes, absolutely. Know? Well, my thing is like d- disclose that because I'm all for. Ca- I'm a capitalist. Absolutely. If, if you want, if you can make money by doing something, as long as you're being truthful with people, mm-hmm. it's. It, I, I would have been, I would have been I would have had more respect if they would have said you know what I do have a profit interest in this but we're not going to compel you to take a vaccine we're not going to that is your choice but if you do choose to take it which I recommend because there is medical benefit to it I may profit from that because I'm a shareholder or I'm a patent holder okay be truthful but when you start compelling people and saying you have to do this you have to do this did you profit I don't have to tell you put two and two together are you fucking kidding me the president of the United States has to, um, you know, he has to liquidate or sign away yeah. certain assets and yes. things before he takes the job. Correct. Now, granted, this pandemic was, was you know, not a planned thing. Sure. But don't you think it would have been rather wise that someone in his position and maybe the people around him at some point mm-hmm. would have recognized, you know, to, to, to give no appearance of impropriety yeah. in any way, shape, or form, let's... Let's make sure that we divest our interest in the pharmaceutical yes. company if we're going to plead you to engage with them, right? And yes. do it. Pretty fucking common sense, in my opinion. And see, and that and that, that's the kind of shit that makes the average person like me, yeah. the average person just like well, doing my life and watching yep. this bullshit, not trust anyone in government. Yeah, that's exactly I, right. All through my life, I've yep. seen it over and over and over again. I know the humans, they, they succumb to the greed and the power and the money. I get it. I know the formula. But, man, it's like you, there was an opportunity there for that man to, you know, just say, look, you don't have to like or even agree with me. But just so you know, I'm going into this. I'm telling you this independently. I, yeah. We, we've divested our interest in this. Yeah. There's not, they, even if he didn't make a proclamation that he divested his interest, he wouldn't be dealing with this question now. But look how corrupt Paul, look, look at Pelosi, right? Her husband's one of the biggest traders and always makes these great trades right before certain legislation comes down. She was asked the question by the media, do you think spouses of, of members of Congress should be for, prohibited from trading stocks? She's like, no, not at all. It's free market. You should be allowed to. 
It's oh, it's it's great. I love to hear an ultra liberal thinking person right then speak about the free market when it's when it benefits benefiting that, them. Yes, exactly. I that's, love that's that. exactly right. And that was like, are you kidding me? There are people that actually trade. They follow their trades literally because they have to disclose trades they're making. They follow them. They just trade what they trade. And they make a shit ton of money doing it because they're buying all these call options before like certain legislation comes down. Um, you know. You know, before certain regulations with the EPA comes down, they're buying all this stuff, and it's they're privy to it. They're trading off of inside information, but apparently, it's not illegal. Yeah, I, I don't know how anyone in Congress for the two years you you set out to serve as a congressperson, the six years as a senator. Yeah, I don't know why we don't have mechanisms in place that require them to either divest or requires them to uh, put in family members' name, whatever. But yeah. but at, at definitely not let them trade. Mm-hmm. on anything that they're remotely connected to or maybe you don't let them trade at all for the state maybe that's just maybe that's just one of the prices you have to give up okay. if you're going to take the seat okay i disagree slightly okay, so talk, talk about it well I, I think they they should be able to trade and, and earn and make money in the stock market so long as they're not trading off information the public doesn't have and how right that, are that's we the problem right that, that that's the problem right and, it, and it, it's it always a problem every day. right and, and there are people that trade off inside information all the time they're just not they're not you know busted by the SEC you know just in, maybe, insiders maybe that's the problem well maybe right the SEC I, needs to step up the game yeah but, but then they're yeah. going to be indicting their bosses you see? well and, and it, it's a whole vicious cycle so I, I it, it's a hard problem to solve I don't know a solution to it I think you know when you're giving up. Because think, think about it right now. Like if 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 I went into Congress, right, I'd have to give up my business interests. I wouldn't be able to, you know, run my law firm, right? I'd have to go to, and I, I would lose money doing that. Going mm-hmm. to Congress, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm moving into public service now. That's a choice I would make. But I think I think people, certain public servants, should be able to earn income by trading stocks or, or investing in companies. Now they should not. Now there's got to be some mechanism in place to prevent them from trading off of non-public material inside information now defining materiality is what's the difficulty oh, no like, question what is material right um i don't have i don't have an answer i don't have a solution but it's it's a problem but i don't think eliminating the ability to trade stocks is the answer what about this how about we just put term limits in and, and me- that that's yes that's the well, solution to a lot of things okay so let's talk about that because i don't think we've, you and i've ever talked about term limits 10-year any, term limit in any show we've ever done yep that's we've never touched on term limits yeah. So I've always been a proponent for it because I think it solves a lot of problems. Mm-hmm. So if you have, you, you say, let's say, make it 10 years ten for years a senator, term, yeah. right? Two five-year terms? Uh, well, Cong- uh, Con- senators are four-year terms, I believe. Correct. I so thought there were six. Maybe it is six. I can't remember. Uh, congressmen are two years. Right. So 10 years and 12 years, maybe. So if it, if it is six for a senator, we'll say Two, two terms, 12 years, and then 10 years, five terms of two years for a congressman. Okay. And then you have to step off, and you can rerun again. Or you can run for something else. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. If there's new influx, new blood yes. coming in and out of the system all the time, you will get successful business people at yes. some point in time who've done well. Yeah. That say, you know what, I'm going to do. I'm going to do a civic duty here. I politics has always interested yeah. me. I, you know, I know I'm going to have to divest certain interests and in certain things I can't do yep. for these two years or four years yep. or maybe maybe two terms if you're you know they like it enough. Yeah. But for this period of time, I'm going to go and I'm going to mm-hmm. contribute and think about the brain power that could enter Absolutely. the political fray yeah. if the intent going in was it was going to be temporary. Yes. I I think that would solve a lot of problems we have in this country. One, because you bring new energy. You bring new ideas. You do it with the president. You, you Exactly. You bring a lot of new blood. You refresh it. Um, and you make things more competitive because a lot of times these people get in, they become career politicians. Rocco. The machine funds them. Rocco, here, here's the thing. See, I, I hear people say, "Well, that's the Republican manifesto's term limits." Well, it really should be the liberal manifesto because the liberal um, platform for many years has talked about, you know. Ground, a groundswell of, of of grassroots candidates, right? Yep. The average person coming in, we need new blood, we need yep. we need new ideas, we need the young people. Mm-hmm. You can get that, yeah, absolutely right. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You would get new blood, new ideas. You'd have this constant s- cycle yes. 
of, of, of change, yes. right? It's a big word in the Democratic Party. Change. I mean, I mean, this would give it to you. I mean, think about it. Do you think Pelosi, Schumer, McConnell, they're in touch with what's actually going on out there? They don't have a fucking clue. No. Like, they've been in politics their whole life. Even Biden's been a career politician. And look, what... When Biden got elected, I wanted him to be successful. He's the president of this country, yep, right? I know. And, and He's you been have, on record saying that. Yeah, and, and you have these people that they're not in touch with what's really going on out there. They have no idea the struggles you and I face every day or, or what we go through as business owners. They've been in politics their whole life. Mm -hmm. So how can they legislate and come up with rules and regulations that, that we have to play within – from their seat in their ivory tower or in their fucking Capitol building that they've been in for 40 years. And they've never been on the ground to actually see how it works. Like, love Trump or hate Trump, that's why I liked him as a president. That's why I also liked Mitt Romney when he, when he originally ran. Because mm -hmm. they understand business. Absolutely. They understand, like, small business runs the country. Like, small businesses employ the most people in this country, not large corporations, small, small to mid-sized businesses, mm -hmm. people like us. Mm -hmm. And these people understood that. No question. And they did what they could to try and help. Mm -hmm. And now you have these career politicians that just, like, look at the Bernie Sanders of the world. Like, a zillion years old, like, what have you done? What have you done to say, how are you legislating on business in – the way businesses should and shouldn't run are the rules they have to play by when you've never been in a business well, or operated the business. First off, and I, I have said this since I was in high school when I first started to formulate opinions. If you're going to run as a socialist in America, okay, no, 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 no hear me, no, okay. no, you have the right to do it. Sure. He's been successful getting that seat in yeah. Vermont, right? Yep. He's an independent now, but he's a socialist. He's yes. an unabashed socialist. Yes. He, there's plenty of written work of him, speeches. He's a socialist. Yep. If you're going to run as a socialist in America, yep. you better be living the socialist life. Oh, right. You better not be taking advantage of capitalism. Correct. Right? Yeah. That's not what I see. <laughs> I hear a lot of shit. Yeah, right. I mean, he's got all of his talking points down. How could yeah, he not after right. all these yep. years? And he likes the attention. Yep. He likes to rev up the crowd. Yep. And he's got a quirky delivery. So he's kind of like, you know, people love him. Yeah. And and I get it from a marketing standpoint. Mm -hmm. yeah. But from a sub substance standpoint, yeah. he's a fraud. He drives an Audi R8. He's a fraud. I know he flies first class. Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, it's ridiculous. I'm just, I'm just saying, you can't pretend to be somebody that you're not, and and I think that most politicians do that. Most politicians, by nature, are capitalists. Let's be honest. Well, it takes capitalism to get elected, correct? And then they get out of office and they make money off of their celebrity that they got while they were in office. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, I guarantee you, when AOC leaves office, she will make a shit ton of money going out appearances, books. And that's depends capitalism. How the, depends how the next two years go. I, I think, I think she might she be will enemy still, number one here. In the, in the, and she'll still make money because of it. Yeah. People want to hear enemy number one story. Yeah. Like, that's the thing. These, these people, like, it's yeah. not, you know, I mean, look how much money Obama made when he left yeah, office. Yeah, it's, it's, it's basically a celebrity opportunity. Yes, To exactly. get in there and make a name for themselves. Just fucking admit it then. Yeah. Just There's admit. no bad news, just as long as you spell my name right. Yes, just admit it that, that we are capitalists at heart, mm -hmm. regardless of what we say, and we're going to capitalize on this opportunity. You don't see people leaving politics saying, you know what, I'm going to go back and, and be a bartender. Mm -mm. No, she's going to make hundreds of thousands of dollars a year doing speeches, consulting, that's capitalism at work. Think about that. Yeah, and I'm okay with the everyday person. I, I, I think, I think that we need mm -hmm. more bartenders that make it. Absolutely, one hundred percent. We need the grassroots. We need yes. that. And this is what I've always thought the Democratic Party was good at yeah. doing. Mm -hmm. Seems like the Republican Party is starting to figure that out the yeah. last couple yep. of elections. But that's. But, but when you those folks get in and you watch them turn, yeah, the blame does go on them. Mm -hmm. But you understand it because the system is yep. such that they're now just in there. They see the plays in front of them. Yep, and they're just making moves. It's about self promotion to get on that TV screen yep. to get that little clip to go on CNN and be the talking head for yep. these four or, five, or to have the. You know, the, the Brian Seltzer keep calling me back as a yeah. guest. I mean, it's all about that marketing thing. Yes. Self-preservation and self-promotion. Yeah. That's what there it's about. There you go. Those are the two things they do. There you go. Yeah. That's exactly right.
Yes. I'm always All right. right. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I know. <laughs> sad, sadly, you are. Just a regular lawyer. Just a regular. Just for, he's always right just for a regular lawyer. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so this is this is kind of crazy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Let's go there. Uh, yeah. So, did you hear that China? Yeah, of course. Got a China got a signal on their telescope from an alien, supposedly. Now, I don't know if it happened months ago and they're just revealing it now, or it happened last week. I'm not really sure. It was just revealed. The name of their telescope is the FAST, F-A-S-T telescope. Okay. I guess that acronym uh, has something to do, but it's a competitive telescope with our technology. Yep. Um, and apparently there was a signal coming in, mm-hmm. and this somehow was officially released by China Yeah. for a couple of days, and then it was somehow removed. Right. So <laughs> did what's your thoughts on it? I don't know what to believe when it comes to China. Let's just let's just. Call I don't know it what like, to believe for my own country. Call call it like you see it. Like China has a way of manipulating the news to divert attention. Mm-hmm. And that do do I believe there is potential alien life out there? Absolutely. Oh yeah. It's it's egocentric to Agreed. think otherwise. Like, I, I there's agree. other things out there in the universe. I agree. Whether China got a signal from someone or not, that is yet to be determined. I feel a lot of things that China does is to divert attention to what China's doing or from what China's doing. Whatever's going on in China, let's, you know, something bad could have been happening. Like, hey, guess what? An alien contacted us. Look over here. Don't worry about what's going on over here. And then when this kind of calms down, oh, we were just kidding. Put that away. Like, it, I feel like that's what they do. With the whole pandemic, it happened, right? The stories were so misplaced and, and put out and then put back. And then you don't know what to believe anymore. You really don't know well, what to believe. Well, no. And, and again, they are um, – America is watching that country closely yeah. because now we're wondering if they're going to go invade Taiwan. Yes. You know, is this the perfect opportunity to do it? And speaking of that, they're naturally uh, been – rather friendly with putin and russia yes and that whole war is still going on with putin apparently putin is getting strength now i guess he's finally starting to take the eastern part of the country and that's i think that's what it looks like that's what he's going to ultimately try to take is the eastern yeah cities that is not even on the news man no no it's not it went poof Mm -hmm. so we don't even know on a day in day out basis how many people get dying how many planes we were almost knowing a blow by blow when a a plane was hit yeah. or when a a boat was sunk or when this particular building was blown apart and i'm sure all those things are still going on daily over there in some capacity yep. we don't know the, the media tells us we what don't they care. want us to know we don't care well I, I don't even think it's that i think i think the media tells us what they want us to know it's it I mean, if you if you look at the media uh, in the past 10 years of my adult life, it is pure information manipulation. I believe that. I believe there are very, very few true media sources, true journalistic sources out there. It is, we are going to tell the people what we want them to know and believe. So if the war in Ukraine is not on the top of the list for these media companies to sell advertising or to get people to watch, they're not going to talk about it. There's other things they're going to talk about. And that's what I believe is going on here. Is the war still happening? Absolutely. Is it still terrible? Absolutely. Do do people in this country still care? I'm sure they do. But does the media still care? I don't think as much. And that's what I believe the problem is. There's a lot of manipulation. I think it's funny that with inflation high and yeah. the gas prices high now, it's now and, – and, and the president blaming Putin for these mm-hmm. things. Yeah. It's the Putin price hike. It's the Putin inflation. Um, you know, is it going to be the Putin border wall next? Mm-hmm. Is it going to be, you know, I, I don't know. What's the next mm-hmm. crisis that's coming down the down the pike? Well, here? and I think, look, uh, you know, to, to that point, and again, this is this is my pure speculation. You have, if we start talking, you know, inflation is ridiculously high right now. Gas prices are high. If we start now talking more about the war and tying the war to inflation and to gas prices in a in a more strict way, people are going to want us to get involved in that war because they're going to think that's the way to save America. Mm-hmm. We got to get inflation down. We've got to get gas prices down. We're so entwined in this war. We're talking about this war all the time. Obviously, the war is the problem. Let's go. Let's end, end the war. Yeah. 
And so they're trying to like not put that aside. That's a problem. Maybe that's a good thing. Though. Like I think they're trying to and – and I give Biden credit yeah, for not getting involved too. in that war me because too. it's a senseless war for us to get involved in. He's been consistent I, there. I, absolutely. And I, and I give the administration credit for that. Absolutely. We should not be involved in that war. And I, that's why I believe a lot of the media is diverting attention away from it because the moment we start talking about it, again, to your point, we don't like to think deeply. So we're going to hear inflation, gas prices, war. Somehow they're connected – Let's go end the war like we did everywhere else. Putin keeps, I mean, I'm sorry, but Biden keeps blaming Putin. But Biden's, I think, somehow trying to connect them. Well, or yeah, find well, someone so, to blame. Well, right, that, that, it's someone to blame. That's what it is because he doesn't want. They don't want to take responsibility for what's going on. So they're saying it's Putin. It's Putin. It's Putin's problem. No, it's our problem. Let's solve the problem here. But I believe if they start tying the war, I mean, you can say Putin is one thing, right? Like everybody like Putin's bad, Russia bad. We start going back to the war and showing the war and the and the devastation that's happening and all the things going on on a consistent and daily basis, then people start cognitively connecting inflation, gas prices, what's going on over there. We need to get involved to stop this shit yeah. so inflation comes down and gas prices come down. That's what I believe they're trying to prevent from happening. I could be completely wrong. That is where my logic goes. It, it's it's just painful every day to realize that yeah. we have an administration that would rather go do business in the Middle East, mm-hmm. in South uh, South America, uh, would rather deal with these sketchy governments and buy oil from them yes. as opposed to harvesting here, yes. or you know being friendly or to embrace mm-hmm. our oil companies yeah. and ask for help mm-hmm. ask for cooperation make things a little easier to do business Just drill. We've, we've made them enemies yes. we, we're making our oil companies enemies yes. and hurting them but we're willing to go buy a yes. rogue state. Yes. I mean, I find it very fast. At a higher price. At a higher price. I also, and this is the kind of shit that leaves the average Joe who does a little thinking, mm-hmm. is second level thinking or third level thinking as they reflect with their beer on the couch. Yeah. Right. That maybe there's forces going on here that don't make any sense. Exactly. That's exactly I mean, right. And that's why you have conspiracy television shows, I yes. guess. But, but then, of course, of course, the elite will then say, oh, he's just a conspiratorial nut. Well, you assholes forced him to think that way. Correct. It's exact, exactly. You created right. the fucking monster. Maybe yeah. there isn't a conspiracy, but maybe you fucked up things so bad yes. in so yes. many different ways. Yes. The average person really has a hard time getting their arms around it all. percent agree. Yes. And it does look like somebody or some group is actually intentionally yep. screwing up society, yeah, making it harder on the American person yep. to get them to capitulate to something that the elite wants. Yep. Agreed. That's what it looks like. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying that's the reality. Yeah. I'm open minded enough to say, hey, I might be like going down the wrong alley here, mm-hmm. but you don't see I mean when you when you have the ability yeah. to have an industry in your country, like an energy sector that would give you national security, would would give you would help your inflationary issues, would keep your economy under control. Mm-hmm. And, and you'd be in control of our own destiny as a country for yes. that matter. It'd probably keep us out of wars too, mm-hmm. right? Absolutely. And you can do that, but you're not. You'd rather go play with the devil. Right. A devil that you said as the commander in chief mm-hmm. in the election process during multiple times, but definitely during a very publicized and televised yep. debate, that you were going to hold this country. Saudi Arabia, yep. accountable for the rogue state that they were yep. because of this particular issue or this murder of this person. Yep. I, I mean, all valid points, I'm sure. sure. I'm not saying those aren't. But you went on record and you said that. Yep. And now you want to go play fucking footsie. Yeah. <laughs> That's the problem, man. With your hand out right. like a pauper. Yep. The, ma- the man controlling mm-hmm. the richest, most powerful country, we think, Still in the world, mm-hmm. you're going to go out with your hand out yep. like a pauper. It's bullshit. They might, that king may tell him to suck eggs. Yeah. I mean, really? It's bullshit. I mean, that that, that is the problem. Like The we, image yes. of our country it's takes a, joke. a hit. It's a fucking joke right now. It really is. It's a joke. And I, I, I remember thinking, um, who's the one guy? Trevor Noah from Comedy Central. Pretty liberal mm-hmm. guy. Mm-hmm. I remember he, it was a few months ago, but he was talking about, you know, 
um, this whole war and everything going on. And, and he was, you know, he was a staunch Trump hater. No, no, no doubt. You know, but he said he's like, he's like, I'm going to say it. He's like, if Trump was in office, this shit wouldn't happen. They wouldn't be hanging up on him. Right. That's what he said. He's they like, take, they, would, they, they take, take his call. seriously. They that, take his call because exactly Biden couldn't get it. Is it's exactly leaked, whether it's said. true or not, I don't know. Yep. But it was leaked that they wouldn't That's take what it was. Biden's That's call. exactly what it was. He yeah. was talking about that. He's like, that that would not happen. He's like, whether you loved him or hated him, people feared him and respected him. And that that's the difference with this administration. Like we're a joke right now. Yeah. Like when you when you have other world powers seeing our commander in chief who's cognitively gone, yeah. in my opinion, yep. in an administration that all they're worried about is appeasing the the fringe of society mm-hmm. in these these smaller groups and not really dealing with the real issues. It's like it's like open season. Yeah. I mean, it's open season, and that's you know, and when you have the, the vice president staff members leaving in droves because they can't, like that, just says a lot about our country at this I point. I can't in time. wait for the books to be written from the people that oh lead this in, administration because you know it's going to take four or five years for them to surface. Oh, yeah, absolutely, but he, he's that whether hey whether it's another Democrat or it's a Republican ultimately in twenty four it won't be Biden. No, it's not, and that administration no is going to change. Yes, absolutely, and there's right. going to be some very interesting books yep. about what's really going on i still believe that there are i don't believe it's one person pulling the strings but i believe there are two or three people that are uh in that inner circle Mm -hmm. that are instructing because he's getting orders from someone he's even slipped at times well they want me to say this yeah yeah. he said some really bizarre shit yeah did you see or did you see any excerpts of his appearance on kimmel (laughs) was it kimmel (laughs) it was was it kimmel or fallon I can't I thought, remember. I thought it might be Kimmel. It might I thought be it was Kimmel. Yeah, yeah. And, and even Kimmel was like he went through a break at one point. Pushed, yeah, because he was like, ah, oh. well, he didn't understand what he was saying. Yeah, he's like, we're gonna go to a break, and you could tell, like, what is this dude saying? So these liberals, um, uh, liberal, uh, I hate to label people, uh, liberal entertainment, liberal thinking entertainers yes. who are unabashed mm-hmm. uh, supporters of this man, they have to be terrified. Yeah, <laughs> because I'll tell you, there's a lot of Republicans who, whether they liked him or not, they voted for Trump, and a lot of them, when they saw some of the things Trump did, they were horrified. Yeah, right. Exactly. You know? So I mean, yeah, it sure. goes both ways. Absolutely. But I mean, to try to, I mean, if you wanted change so bad, you voted, um, you voted to get rid of Trump. You got your guy, yeah. and your guy is a train wreck. A uh, train wreck. I mean, it isn't just two two dudes like us just saying this. I mean, just look around. It's train look. Wreck. Just look around the last eighteen months. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's a train wreck. Yeah. Even in the last month, yeah. month and a half. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is not good. We even we there's we haven't even dealt with the food supply issues that right. I think are coming. Yep. You know, and and I and I'm still having trouble finding baby formula. And, and ironically, I heard that uh, that Abbott Laboratories had to shut down again. Mm-hmm. And think about the food the, the food shortage. We're touching it, and we'll save it for another episode, but. Now, who's the biggest farmland owner in the United States? Gates. Yeah. Yeah. Wonder why. Yeah. And there's, 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 there's some very, and that's the kind of stuff that the average guy sitting on the couch, when he hears yeah. that stuff, he starts to conflate those things and yeah. they start lining up like, wait a second. Everything's kind of happening in some kind of crazy order yeah. here. You know? Yeah. And the last thing I, I believe is that I will, I definitely don't believe that the coronavirus was, was uh, orchestrated some conspiracy no, in this I don't country. Believe I don't so believe either. that. No. But I, I think, the coronavirus and our reaction to it was an opportunity, a hundred percent, for uh, a certain viewpoint to to live for. In this circumstance, it was it was a liberal or a very um, uh, left wing mm-hmm. style of government. Yeah, this was an opportunity to maybe maybe this is the opportunity that uh, the left wing of the Democratic Party has never had the opportunity mm-hmm. to put extreme views yeah. in. That's exactly right. And actually get them passed, yeah. at least for a period of time. Yeah. And they took their shot. They had yeah. it. Now, it's not, at least it's not trending this coming election here that no. it's going to work out very well. But I, I just sit here today, like just thinking to myself, the things that I'm seeing on a day in, day out basis mm-hmm. leads the average person to look around and just think something in Dodge is just not right. They might not be able to figure it out or articulate exactly what it is. It's the gut check or the smell test. It doesn't smell, pass the smell and test. You, and, that, and, that, and I think that that's what, because we don't do a lot of deep yeah. thinking in this country, people are maybe are starting to, starting to put two and two in, in four. Yeah. And four and four is eight. Yeah. And, 
well, if this is that and that's well, this. that was something they taught us about in law school like just thinking like the lord's like if it doesn't pass the smell test that's your instincts telling you to dig deeper right like if it if, if you can't figure out what what's wrong but it just doesn't doesn't seem right yeah or it doesn't pass the smell test that that is a sign an instinctual sign yeah. to dig a little deeper and ask the next question mm-hmm. and so that's kind of how I, I live my life that way like if something i may not be able to pinpoint what is off but if I get that, and I, and I say it, I say it all the time, if it doesn't pass the smell test, that gets me to inquire deeper Amen. and to ask that next question. Absolutely. Then it leads to the next question. Then you really get to the answer. It may take time and it takes some difficult, deep, cognitive-based thinking. However, when you get that initial doesn't pass the smell test, that is the clue or the cue to take that next step. And most people don't do that. Good point. So... Uh, the January 6th hearings are on. Have you paid attention to any of it? Have you seen anything about it? I mean, I've, I've watched a little bit here and there. To me, it's just a fucking ruse. Mm-hmm. I mean, what did you say? There's two Republicans well, that's, on the whole panel. So I've, I've watched some of it, and, and the way it's being presented, I mean, you look around, I have, if that really happened, just like they said it happened, that's pretty fucking horrific. Yeah, sure. But it's an orchestrated show. It's a spectacle. If if it was a panel that had an equal or close to being yep. equal amount of Democrats and Republicans on there for a fact finding yes. or to review investigations Correct. and all that yep. and call witnesses, then you could say, well, you know, that I would find it more valid. If it was done in the middle of the afternoon, it wasn't mm-hmm. specially done for prime time. Right. And if it wasn't served up on a platter to right. liberal networks, mm-hmm. I mean, I think it I think it also is absolutely ridiculous, though, that Fox chooses not to cover it. I agree. It, it is a spectacle, but it's a new, it's news. It's, sure, and it makes. It, I don't think it puts Fox in a great light. No, by not covering it. No, but I, but I think the reason why they're not covering it because they, what I believe is the case. It's the liberal media created a narrative. This panel is giving them the justification for the narrative. There's no doubt about. That's it. what I believe is happening. There's right? No because look, it. it should happen on absolutely. Was it what the narrative? I don't believe so. Was it what the narrative said? I don't believe so. Now they're creating this panel run by a majority of Democrats to allow that narrative to stick. We're going to give you what you need to make sure that narrative actually sticks. Let me ask you something as a a non-attorney. Okay. Let me take the hat off. Yeah. So, well, no, 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 no. I'm asking. Oh, you're you're the non-attorney to the attorney. Got it. I was going to take the attorney To the regular attorney. That's fine. I'm the pretend attorney. Let me put the regular attorney. (laughs) I'm the pretend attorney. (laughs) I'm going to take the special attorney hat off and put the regular one on. Okay. Go for it. This is my, just a theory. Okay. There is so much hatred in certain sectors of society toward President Trump. And there's... Certainly within Congress, there are just the, the, the venom against that man. Yeah. You can just see it. It sees out of the mm-hmm. pores of some of these Congress people. And I get it because he, Trump probably gave them a shit ton of venom, too. I'm not saying sure. that it's valid or invalid, but I'm saying it's an observation, Rocco. I see the venom, right? Okay. It's been going on for a long time. He's been out of office for is it 18 months, about right? 19 months? Yeah, about 18, 18 okay. months. Yep. All these accusations and hearings and depositions and impeached twice, mm-hmm. right? And all this shit. Did it take 18 months if you had all kinds of stuff on the man and he was this criminal despot mm-hmm. as he's been betrayed? Wouldn't you brought him up on charges? But yeah. every single time there's an investigation or a grand jury, it ends without, yep. you know, bringing charges. That is correct. So, my to a guy like me that doesn't understand everything, I'm just I'm just spitballing here. Yeah. What does that show me as an average citizen? Like, it, you know, if you got it, just take care of business, arrest mm-hmm. them. And let the process go along. Yeah. It's like they don't have it. They don't. They're basically just smearing him yes. over and over That's and over. So opinion. they hopefully will stop him from running. That's exactly again. right. That's, That's exactly just right. a layman's observation. I mean, that's the attorney's observation as well. Because, uh, again, if they had something, they would is have Is this the entertainment it. attorney or the regular attorney? This is both of those attorneys. <laughs> Put both hats on. <laughs> both are on. Um, no, but I, I think that I think that that's the point, right? There, if they would have had something that was criminal, he would have been charged already. That's my observation. I mean, it, I, 
agreed. Yes. This is a pure, because here's why. Trump came in and exposed a lot of the shit that's wrong. He was the guy that no one wanted in office, right? He was the outsider. He came in and exposed Washington and exposed a lot of the liberals and the Democrats, even some of the Republicans, right? He exposed people. They let an outsider in. They're like, fuck. We have to do whatever we can to get this guy out and then keep him out. Make sure he doesn't come back. Right. Because he, he was, he, you know, I, I was watching a video earlier this week, um, you know, one of these influencers, um, MMA guy, but he was talking about Trump and he's like, people, he's like, because society now has vilified alpha males. Mm-hmm. We've, we've vilified and Trump was the epitome of an alpha male and he came in the office and he did the shit he said he was going to do in the way he said he was going to do it and he didn't pull punches and he didn't play nice but he got shit done and it totally flew in the face of people's sensibilities at this point in time right. and right. that's what happened and people couldn't take it and then he also exposed the shit that was wrong in Washington so all these insiders like we need to get this fucking guy out and while he's out we need to keep him out and do whatever we can to smear him because my because my whole thing is, it's eighteen months. It's time to own the country. If you're the new, that would be like me deciding I'm going to coach a baseball team next year, and we have a shitty year, but I blame the previous coach. It's like no, I'm the one coaching the fucking team, and if the team shits the bed, that's on me. When Biden stepped into office, the problems became his. Agreed. When Trump stepped in the office in Agreed. 2016, the problem. Now he did the same thing. I can't. I'm going to. I'm going to play it fair. He blamed shit on Obama, mm-hmm. right? However, especially early on, absolutely. But he also owned things, and he Vic he came in and said, "I'm going to do this, this, and this," and he did it. Biden came in and said, "I'm going to do this, this, this," and he's done the complete opposite. Mm-hmm. Complete opposite, and then everything he's done that's been bad, oh, it's Trump's fault. It's Putin's fault. It's not my fault. It's not, I'm just here. Yeah, like, I'm just here. It, like, the, the administration's a failure. There, complete there's, there's, failure. I know. Uh, let me let me walk in, that in back. most instances. Let me walk this back. There's probably some things I'm, I'm not of thinking course, about. Yes. However, the one I am thinking about, he's not a failure. Is he's kept us out of World War III. Agreed. Yeah. He's kept American um, credit men, credit servicemen too. and service women get, keep kept them off of that ground. Absolutely, and that and credit is due. And for that's that. a big thing. That's a big thing. It's so a huge I, thing. I give, I give him. I give yes. him major props on that. But every other aspect. I mean, and, and here's the thing, man. Again, I know you know my story, so it's a little personal for me. So I lost my dad a couple of years ago yeah. to dementia, Rocco. And I'll tell you, I, I, I saw the signs, mm-hmm. and and again, I'm I'm not his doctor. Yeah, I'm just a guy. Yeah. I'm just giving you my opinion. Yep. That's all I do. I see that vacancy in the eyes, and I see yeah. that that I just see what I saw in my dad. Yeah, and I and as many people, I'm sure, going through the same thing, can see it in President Biden. Like yeah. he's just not there. He might not have dementia. He might not have Alzheimer's, but yeah. he's cognitively compromised. Yeah. That's pretty obvious. Call it whatever it is. I'm not a doctor. Any average American can see it. Yeah, but people now are not afraid to say it. Like I yeah. think there was an etiquette thing almost where most Americans would like talk quietly amongst mm-hmm. each other, you know. But now it's freaking dangerous, man. Yeah, because everybody sees it. It's but so it's, obvious. But no, but it's dangerous to have someone in, with what's going on in the world in yes. general. With China, yes, and and unfortunately, the vice president doesn't give me any confidence either. If they if he was to resign, like I I, I don't, don't want see her. I anywhere. don't want her. Where I haven't seen her do anything. I mean, if she's got if she's got a special type of skill set in regards to international diplomacy, it's not on display. No, not at all. It's not, not at I, all. And if it if there's ever time for her to step up, mm-hmm. it's now. Yeah. Th- th- this is a run and hide administration. Maybe this, so, is, this is a run and hide administration. So who's behind Biden? Who's the part? Is it Susan Rice? Machine. Uh, there's something. Yeah, I know, but that's. Yet, and I don't know who I don't know who and, runs that and machine. You might be right, but what I'm saying is, I'd like to put some faces to that I, machine. I wish we could. So it makes more sense to me. Yeah, I mean, I don't even know who those faces would be. I, honestly, I don't. Like, I, I wish I wish I had an answer to that. I just know it's not Biden. There's some sort of machine running this. Wouldn't. It, wouldn't it be fascinating? Hear, hear me out. Let's hear you out. Wouldn't it be fascinating that once this administration is gone, that we find out that mm-hmm. the people that were putting together his talking points mm-hmm. and putting together policy and administration yeah. policy ends up being like a bunch of ultra young, 
you know, first, you know, staffers, it may be a little consortium of like maybe sure. five or 10 of them that are just, you know, very young, right out of college. Uh, Not out of the realm of possibility. To just getting together in yeah. a little think tank and yeah. saying, hey, Uncle Joe, here's yeah. something to, to put yes. out there. Yeah. I mean, I don't Let's mean to forgive be disrespectful, everybody's student loans. But I'm just saying it's just interesting. Yeah, I agree. Wouldn't um, it be fascinating that if he was basically, if Biden had really banished all of his senior states people around him, for the most part, and maybe it's this little collective of, of young, you know, first or second year staffers. It could be. Yeah, we have no How idea. How do we know? We have no idea. We have no idea. I just know something's not right. That's all I can say. I mean, Visaki knows. You'll never hear the truth. No, not at all. And, and this, she left. And her, She's repla- gone. and her replacement here knows, too. She seems flustered. I actually feel bad for her because it seems like she... It seems like she's a better human than Jen. Sorry, Jen. Uh, no, I agree completely. Better human, yes. better person. Yes. But she really seems flustered up there. Oh, she does not seem comfortable with that at all. No. I mean, well, who, who would be comfortable in that job? Yeah, but I mean, I think you got to be comfortable. I mean, look, look at um, Trump's press secretary. Like she, she, whether you liked her or hated her, she was prepared. McElhaney. Mac- Kaylee McElhaney. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, she. Well, Masaki was too, though. I yeah, never but, liked but, her. She, she had a condescending way about her. That was the that was the issue. Like she had a. But con- she was pretty tough. She she was tough, but she never answered the question. Like do that was the do issue. Any of them that really. She Kaylee did. It like she, a lot. she would she would say, No, 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 you're wrong. Here's the facts. Okay. Like she had that notebook that was tabbed. She anticipated every question. Yeah. The, if you watched her press conference, I, I used to with watch them. I would agree. She with that. anticipated. Like yeah. she was smart and thoughtful and spoke really well and did not get flustered. I never in all and I didn't watch every press conference. I watched a lot of hers. I never saw her get rattled. Yeah, because she always had information. If you have information, if you have facts, you're never going to get rattled. Like that's something they taught us in law school. If you have the facts to support you and you know your case inside and out, nothing a witness will say will rattle you. Yeah, and that's the same thing when it comes to this shit. Terrible. That's my two cents. Last thing. Yeah, let's do it. So, have you tried the healthy Coke yet? I mean, of course. That's what I'm drinking right now. No, that's Pepsi. I know. Oh, Pepsi. Uh, you mean the the TikTok? What is it? Uh, sparkling water and balsamic vinegar. Yes, that's, you tried it. No, are you fucking kidding okay, me? So, Why so would apparently, I do that? apparently, there's a woman on TikTok who I don't even have TikTok, but I did. I, my, I did my homework. So and, yeah, and he didn't even know. It's I did not know. Yeah, you're right. Correct. So uh, we, I see, we actually have a pre plan pre planning meeting for yeah. these shows. <laughs> so uh, yeah, she is a TikTok person i don't know if it's an influencer i don't know if it's an instagram model i don't know what this person is, but she's on tiktok sure. and she's a big smile on her face and she's got this concoction that looks like coca-cola and she says hey my pilates instructor told me that he or she drinks this <laughs> every day and it's fantastic and it tastes just like a, it's a healthy coke <laughs> well things kind of go viral on the web and apparently, this concoction was a combination, which I don't know what part what, what part what, but it's basically just sparkling mineral water mm-hmm. and balsamic vinegar. Of course. And this is the healthy Coke. So, of course, because we don't do any really anything deeper than first level thinking for, in most instances, right. all of us. It's sparkling and it's brown. It must be healthy Coke. It must be healthy. Oh, if she told me, I saw some lady on TikTok that told me this is a healthy Coke and this is what it can be. It must be good. Listen, I've purchased things off TikTok. I'm like, that makes sense I, to me. I, 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 and I'm like, why did I buy that? I've seen your stationary bike desk. I've seen it. Yeah. Listen, I, I'm using it. I've seen that. Listen, I was reading a document on the other day while I was pedaling away. So that was a TikTok purchase. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Right, Great in, idea. right in his office. The yes. Desk with a little <laughs> pedal bike. That, okay. It's fantastic. So, so I get it. But you saw. So someone's uh, people saw yes. this, and it would be one thing if just people were making comments and sure. laughing, and it went viral. But yes. there were actual media houses, yes. like the major media houses, right. and Fox and CNN and MSNBC and these big mm-hmm. online magazine, health magazines. Right. They were all getting it. And finding they were using different brands of mineral water, different mm-hmm. brands of balsamic vinegar, different proportions yes. of each, and testing and taste tests and examples and extra video shot. It became a thing. Like, are you fucking kidding me? It's a thing. Like, like think think about like, it. Tastes like ass. It tastes like vinegar. Well, with I water. Didn't try it, but I'm saying everybody is like freaking out because it tastes terrible. Who wouldn't have thought that was going to taste like Coca Cola? I mean, the, so 
let's let's see. The first question I would have asked is, okay, so define healthy Coke. Like, let's start there. Like, th- what is your definition of healthy Coke? To me, so you're saying there is an alternative to Coke that can be healthy. So Coke is sugar water, right? This is Diet Pepsi. So there's no sugar in it, there's but fake, there's artificial there's sweetener. Sugar. So it's probably not the fake healthiest. Fake sugar and water. Right. It's, it, it, it can have the same insulin response. Okay, cool. So what is what would healthy Coke be? So, she, so she's saying healthy Coke because this is something that's brown and carbonated and does not have sugar and vinegar can be healthy. I drink apple cider vinegar every morning yes, and cool. it tastes like shit, but yeah. I drink it every day. It's good for you. It's good for you. So I don't go around putting that in water mother, and saying, this you, is healthy iced tea. The, do you leave the mother on? Yeah, the only, yeah, you're supposed to. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's the real shit. You're supposed, yes. The, okay. the, I know what I'm doing, dude. Come I, on. I asked a question. Listen, good, I'm, good question. Hey, I, I'm a, I'm a I'm a regular attorney in training. For those people out there, that <laughs> the, the mother is the shit that's in the vinegar that looks gross, and you shake it up. And I just drink, yeah. I, I literally drink out of the bottle every morning, so it's, I just take a swig of it every morning. Mm-hmm. Um, brags, right? Yeah, brags. Yeah, absolutely. That's exactly right. Yes, very good. Astute. Can I come work for you now? <laughs> <laughs> we have we have plenty of offices, man. We have a bunch. Yes, of, you do. Yes, we do. You. We have plenty I've been of offices, offices now. Offices, yes. yes. Um, but but think about think about the stupidity, right? People are actually saying, huh, <laughs> I like Coke. I want to be healthy. Her Pilates instructor said, this is healthy Coke. Let me put balsamic vinegar in this carbonated water. It's definitely going to taste like Coke. Are you fucking serious? Yeah. The fact that news channels pick this up, like that just shows, one, it shows the power of social media and how social media can create shit like this. Like, think about that. I, I honestly believe that this woman was sincere about, you know, showing. Sure. What, but I think she just, out of her head, just made up the concept of healthy Coke off the cuff. It wasn't like it was an intended And thing. I see why it would probably look the color of Coke right. and it was she, carbon. Like, oh, it's healthy she Coke. She just kind of, yeah, kind of like a healthy Coke. Ha, ha, ha. Right. But they took it literally. Right. I mean, <laughs> it's hysterical, man. I mean, that would be me. Like, that would be like think uh, think about. It. Okay, I'm gonna get carbonated water and pour like iced tea in and say this is like healthy beer. <laughs> it looks like beer. It's carbonated, same color. It's healthy beer, and people are gonna be like, ah, oh, I like beer. I like to be healthy. I I'm think, gonna drink this. I think you should do that. Tonight. I'm gonna start a TikTok and, video and see, tonight. Uh, I'm gonna in, it's gonna in, go in, viral in, in light of this healthy Coke craze. I, I want to take it one step further. I got healthy healthy beer. beer. Right. I mean, you take carbonated water and Turner's iced tea. But this is the fucking problem right now. So one, social media has that power that it has infiltrated news media with something as ridiculous as this. The second piece is the fact that people did not actually think this is probably going to taste like shit. (laughs) Like they're like, huh? I wonder if. If you put it in the water, maybe it makes the vinegar taste go away, and it makes it taste like Coke. Like, who in their right mind got the balsamic vinegar in the water and said, hmm, I'm pretty sure it's going to taste like Coke. It's just going to be healthy. I I would love to meet those people. Because that just, that to me is, and that is the problem why we, are, why we have these problems in this country. There was no original thought. There's no deep level thinking. It's very surface level. And I'll end it on this. Yes. I don't even think we have to do deep level thinking. How about just taking it to the second level? Because you can do 20 levels of thinking. <laughs> just take it to the second I mean, level. Water tastes like water. Vinegar tastes like vinegar. If I put them together, it's not going to taste like Coke. It's going to taste Coke like watered down sweet. vinegar. Right. Yes. Watered down vinegar. I mean, that's the, that, that to me is the second well, level thought. What's even crazy is that I, I was reading online magazine like articles. <laughs> well, they, were doing t- they were doing all these different brands of it. Like, And finally, I just said, wait a second. These are things that do not contain sugar. Right. Now, well, uh, okay. Well, you do balsamic. You actually have balsamic vinegar business, yeah. don't you? Yes, yes. And, and, it, and balsamic, balsamic vinegar does have sugar content to it. So balsamic small. vinegar is probably the highest sugar content vinegar. But it's such a small amount. It's a small amount, but, 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 but balsamic vinegar is used in desserts, right? If you reduce it down, it does become very sweet. Well, they, they However, didn't, they didn't say reduce. It. Right, you're not. You, there's, there's They're not. There, out of Gordon Ramsay's not over here reducing balsamic vinegar, and then pouring it into As carbonated clay, water. Right. right, though it's not. It, it's literally they were just taking balsamic and putting it into yeah. carbonated water, which is pure stupidity. <laughs> let's just be. Let's just call it. Like and you this see it. is an example of where we are in America, and this is why we do what we do. <laughs> exactly right, buddy. Out yes. of blast as usual. Absolutely, man. All All right, episode we'll, three. We'll see you in two weeks. Yep. Episode four. Thanks, friends. <laughs>